So, by now I think that most of you have heard about the term the Internet of Things. It's about connecting objects around us to the Internet so we can talk with them. And actually, the term the Internet of Things is already around for two decades, and in the 90s, where it was first mentioned, we were promised a smart refrigerator that was connected to the Internet. Who here in the audience has an Internet-connected refrigerator? Nobody. So, a little spoiler, you don't have one because you don't need one, right? Why would you want to connect a refrigerator to the Internet so you know what the contents is of the refrigerator? I think for about 100 years we just opened the door of the refrigerator and we can see what's inside, right? So if you start looking online for all these different examples of Internet of Things products, you come across quite a lot of useless items. So, for instance, a smart internet-connected fork, right? That I, I don't need to know how many bytes I took today. A interconnect, internet-connected coffee cup, I don't need to know how many cups of coffee I drank today, I can remember that. A toothbrush that does what? Help you remember the last time you brushed your teeth. And a egg tray that's connected to the internet so your smartphone knows how many eggs you have still at home. What is this, right? Um, okay, this is a Wi-Fi enabled slow cooker. And this is not doing very well online. There's a product review. Uh, there was a guy who bought this device and probably he was thinking this was the best thing to having a cooking robot. He was very excited. And he came home from work, late, tired, hungry, started preparing his meal, and then he needed his mobile phone to turn on the slow cooker. So, bleep, was on, was cooking, going to the living room, randomly checking some content online, and his phone ran out of battery. Uh, at the same time, he heard a noise in the kitchen. So, going over to the kitchen, what's happening here? And he saw that the slow cooker was not working. Uh, and it was because his phone went out of battery. So he tried to put it back on, tried to search for the buttons, but he only could turn it on with his mobile phone. It's like, ah, this is not doing anything, right? This is only creating more problems. So, like, I'm a tech guy, and um, I want to make te that technology makes impact. And if I look at these examples, then there's no problem being solved. There's just a solution being pushed. So grab a business model, grab a technology, and throw it to the market, right? That doesn't make really much sense to me. So a while later, uh, somebody showed me this device. And this is an antenna. And he said, uh, yeah, this is for the Internet of Things. I said, yeah, yeah, I know a very unhappy guy with a slow cooker. I mean, I know about the Internet of Things. So, no, no, this is for the real Internet of Things. And this device, you compare, can compare it to your Wi-Fi router at home, but it's not connecting smartphones and laptops, it's connecting things. And actually, this antenna can connect up to 10,000 devices at the same time. And it can connect these devices up to a range of 20 kilometers. Wow, interesting technology. And also, the power consumption needed for these devices to send messages over the air to this antenna is very low, so they can last on a battery for very long, which is interesting, because if, for instance, if we want to connect all the chairs in this room, we don't have time to charge the chairs every night like we do with our iPhones. So that's a good, good characteristic. Also, it's an open technology. So anybody can place such an antenna, and anybody can create products that connect to the antenna so they can access to the internet. And also, the costs are very low. So you can already build a network by placing one antenna starting from $300. 
So I, I was quite excited about this, but, but yet again, this is just technology, right? So, so what's the problem? Like, how is this technology going to make impact? And I met up with my business partner, Johan, and we discussed this new technology, and we thought, like, how can we make sure that we make impact with this technology and do something good with it? And if you look at a technology that really made impact, it's the internet, right? It's the real internet. So we looked at how the internet was founded. And actually, from the start, the internet was founded by a group of organizations, and they had local computer networks. But they wanted to exchange information, so they connected their networks together. But what they did is they, among these organizations, they decided to create a common language that anybody could use. So these networks and these computers could understand each other. That's one. The second thing they did is they decided to invest in their end of the infrastructure. So all the cables that are needed or router boxes that you need to make the internet work, they all invested in their end of the infrastructure. And the beauty was is that the internet was founded and it was owned by everybody and nobody at the same time. And a platform was created where all kinds of innovations could flourish. And we all know what happened next. But back then, we didn't know what was next. So we thought, let's embrace this principle and let's apply it to this awesome technology. So first, let's see if we can create an open language so that all these antennas could work together as one big network. So imagine a one big mobile operator for things. Second, why don't we ask the future users of this network to invest in the infrastructure? Because somebody has to buy this antenna. So we made this plan. We gathered more people, a little developers community around us. We were in Amsterdam and we decided that we wanted, wanted to create a city government network in Amsterdam in six weeks. So first we needed to create a common language so-called protocol, to make these antennas work together as one big network. And second, we needed to find 10 businesses that saw the potential in this technology and invest all in an antenna each. And we also knew that coming up with this like, technology story was yeah, actually something that probably businesses would not engage with. So what we did is we decided to create an example. Uh, and what we did is we created a water sensor for boats in Amsterdam. And actually, Amsterdam, if you go across the canals, one in every 10 boats is about to sink to the bottom of the canal. So we thought, why don't we make a sensor for these people that they get notified if their boat fills up with water? So that's what we, what we created. And there, you see that there's actually a problem that people have in Amsterdam. We have a technology, then the data is actually creating the solutions or helping them out, preventing the boat to sinking to the bottom of the canals, and then you have value, right? So that's what we did. Um, six weeks later, we had 10 businesses across Amsterdam setting up one antenna each. This is the map of Amsterdam, and the circles represent the uh, coverage these antenna facilitate. And we created this protocol, this open language to make all these antennas work together. So we created a city covering mobile operator for things. We spread that message uh, across the world uh, and we said like anybody can do this, right? So join us, copy us, do whatever you like, but this is a lot of fun. So what happened next is that people got inspired by our message and one day later, when we launched this in Amsterdam, we got a message from somebody from Sydney, Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, London, Paris, Cape Town, all within a week. And they said, we want to do this as well for our city. We want to create a platform that anybody can create solutions for IoT upon very easily. And um, what we did next is this open technology we used, and we created all the tools around it to make networks. We opened up that knowledge source code 
And as well, we did the same for the solutions. And our brand, the Things Network, which we used to launch this, we opened up that as well, so everybody could create their own local chapter of what we did. And that went viral across the world. So what you're seeing happening there is that, first of all, you saw that these networks start. This is just a technology. But you saw that with only 10 gateways, you can cover a city. So the investment is really small. And a lot of people can profit from that, so they can start innovating on this network without asking anybody permission, without paying anybody money. And what happened next is that all kinds of new ideas started coming up. So, for instance, in uh, Oxford, uh, they have a problem of flooding. So actually, every five years, there's a serious flooding in Oxford in the UK. So citizens decided that they wanted to get, get to control this more and to get to know what's happening. So they placed water level height sensors across the canals in Oxford. And that data was sent over this antenna network to a central system that would show the heights of the canals in Oxford, generating huge value because now the city hall can anticipate on floodings better, as well as the citizens, saving tons of money and trouble. Another great example, citizens in Amersfoort, the Netherlands, they were, were curious about the air quality in their city. They were curious about like, what kind of microclimates are there here. So they placed sensors across the city, but of course they want to share that data uh, across all the citizens of Amersfoort, and they connected these sensors over this antenna network to a central system, and now they have information and actually um, uh, they can make a stand for air quality in Amersfoort. In Japan, when the Fukushima disaster struck, the authorities lacked in providing sufficient information about hazardous and non-hazardous areas. They actually moved people from safe areas to non-safe areas. So a group of citizens in Japan decided to take matters in their own hands. And they created a community that is placing these sensors, and these sensors are measuring the radioactivity. But then again, you need to gather that data, you need a piece of connectivity. So then again, they used this antenna network to real-time send this information to a map. So, two years now, we're working on this. Um, we now have grown to 30,000 members across 90 countries. And you can imagine uh, the joy, joy we feel when we see this map, is that you have this crazy idea, just open up technology, and it goes viral, and, and you see all these different use cases that really make impact emerge across the world. So we are the proof that if you open up technology and put it into the hands of many, you will create solutions that originate from pro problems, and you do not create solutions that only originate from business models. Thank you very much.